Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're checking out UK versus USA food fight line. Five dishes, same name, very different. <laughs> Mythical Kitchen at Tasting History. Today oh. we have Ben Ebers Ebrill representing the UK. Boo. Going head to head with Mythical Kitchen's Josh in a UK <laughs> versus USA food fight. USA, USA, USA. Our incredible judge is Taste History host Max Miller. An American. UK versus USA. With a USA judge. This might be unfair. Well, no. He's actually. I've seen his videos before. I think it could be unbiased. He might even hate on America a little bit. See that look he's giving me? He doesn't like me. He doesn't like America. The fix is in. UK's gonna win. Show me otherwise, Max. Let's get it on! Right, I'm gonna go first with the British yeah. biscuit. A sweet, crisp, delicious thing that we dip into a cup of tea. I mean, the Brits eat more biscuits than any other nation. And what is not to love? Lots of varieties, but always sweet, sometimes with a filling, and perfect to dunk. That is not a biscuit whatsoever. I'm gonna show you a real biscuit. Now this is a proper American biscuit. You know why it's a biscuit? Because you can go down to Carl's Jr. You can get yourself two for three dollars. <laughs> And also Biscuit's deep, deep history of tradition in the South. This is like a relatively American invention. Would y'all call it like a plain scone? Uh, I, I feel like it's a scone or a scone. It's it's a quick bread that's made leavened with scones, sodium bicarbonate. Right? It's got mechanical leavening from a ton of butter that is sitting in pockets there. It's flaky, it's buttery. At the same time... But it, it's not a bis- it's not a biscuit. Yeah, bis- Okay. Are we just gonna argue about words in this video? How difficult is it to understand? We use different words. Sometimes I'm in the mood for a cookie, aka British biscuit. Sometimes in the, I'm in the mood for an American biscuit. What's the competition? They're totally different. We're just arguing about the language again? Is that all this is? Y'all, biscuits are not scones or scones. It's different. Scones are hard. They're dry. In the middle, they're dry. An American biscuit is buttery and flaky and moist on the inside. It's delicious. There's layers in it. It's buttery. A British biscuit, it scratches a different itch. It's sweet. It's crunchy. You dunk it. It's good in tea. It's good in coffee. It's good in milk. It's good. Especially if it's chocolate. No reason to fight here. What are we arguing about? Language? Come on. Let's embrace these differences. Biscuit literally means twice cooked. Twice cooked, and this we is- We stole it from the Italians, biscotti. Well, how many breakfast sandwiches can you get on there at Carl's Jr. in Britain? Uh, that's a good point. I mean, I mean, we're just, we're just dunking. We're just happy to dunk. <laughs> I would call that a cookie. Do you use the term right? cookie for anything? Ah, uh, see, biscuit is like an umbrella term and does mm. like cover cookies, sandwich biscuits. Interesting. See, it's good, right? But that is still a biscuit. Yeah, this is lovely. We don't. I love little treats like these. I wish we had more of a little. I'm not going to call it a biscuit, but I wish we had more of a little fun treat culture in America like that. There is something about tea in Britain. We don't have anything like that, except for maybe. No, there's nothing like that. A cup of tea solves every problem mm. in the UK, and if it's served without a biscuit on the side, you get frowned upon. Hospitality is not complete without a little plate of biscuits. You know what? When I microwave my tea next time, I'll <laughs> put these biscuits in it. The long and the short of it, the biscuit has a history long before Britain with biscotti. Literally, the navy survived on these crisp biscuits. It was an essential part. Now we've sweetened them. They're absolutely delicious, and no cup of tea is complete without one. I'm gonna give you five okay. reasons why these are called biscuits. Carl's Jr., McDonald's, <laughs> uh, Burger King, Chick-fil-A. Taco Bell had a biscuit taco that came out in 2017. You think that they were served on these? No. Listen, America invented fast food and we vomited it all over the globe. This is now <laughs> called biscuits. Sorry, history lost out to commerce again. <laughs> to be fair, all those brands are bigger than McVitie's. <laughs> Your guys' arguments were... Persuasive. Not so persuasive. Yeah, I, I mean, I grew up in America, so this was a biscuit to me, but I'm sorry, this yeah. is a biscuit because it does come from twice baked, mm -hmm. and so I can see the connection there. This is just 
This is delicious, but that's it. We make soggy biscuits with tea. Can you both do be a biscuit. Do you know what a soggy biscuit in America yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't it's just. Know. It's just a, it's just a dippy <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> okay, good. Should we move on to round two? <laughs> Wait, what? A soggy biscuit? Soggy biscuit is a male group. The last person to do so must eat the biscuit. Wow. Do you know what a soggy biscuit in America yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just a, it's just a dippy thing, right? Okay, good. Should we move on to round two? Okay. Now that is some good old fashioned American Concord grape jelly. We call this jelly because it needs to be differentiated from jam and preserve. So jelly is when you take the fruit juice and you strain it, thicken it with sugar, and then use either like a gelatin or most likely a pectin if it's a fruit jelly that you would put on a sandwich. We decided that in preserves or jam, we didn't like all the fiber and all the actual <laughs> fruit parts of it. So right. we strained all that out, threw it in the trash, and we're left with pure American jelly. Mm. That's why this is called jelly. It's America's great. number one. Whereas, for us, in Britain, <laughs> that's a jelly. No way, oh. get out of here. Wibble wobble, wibble wobble on the plate. I guess that we would call that jello. Is jelly. It comes from the French jelly, which literally means to set, to congeal. We stole the word, we took it into jelly. It's an art form. And in Victorian mm. times, it was a way of showing class status. What have I told you, friend? That was called jell o Jelly. <laughs> literally, all, all of my arguments for the American versions of things are just going to be. We may not have invented capitalism, but we sure perfected it, and especially in the food space. Because literally, Jell-O is a name brand product started in 1897 in New York, and it was very much this like hopeful, we've used science to conquer God, we can now gel all our mm. own food and it can be in your own home. It is no longer a point of status to make jellies, <laughs> which is why Jell-O shows up in all of these like 1950s space race era recipes, because we democratized these formerly elegant and erudite and aristocratic processes. So that- I get the feeling that they're actually the same in a lot of ways. Like if that American jelly was not in a jar, you could put it in a jelly mold or jello mold and it would look like that. How is it different other than presentation? I don't know. That is now called Jello. Jello brought this to the masses and they should earn it. I mean, it's a fair point. <laughs> I feel like sweet or savory, jelly is always gonna be this and not that. What do you call this? Do you have a name for this where you strain out all the fruit parts? That's a jam. That's a jam, but a jam... Because you're jamming in as much fruit as you possibly can to preserve it. We don't have grape jelly. PB and J confused us for so long because we couldn't understand why you were putting jelly <laughs> into a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah, no, what gross. we do with jelly, as you call it here, is we cut it into cubes and we mix it with either some combination of Cool Whip and or mayonnaise and or something we call pudding, and then we call it a salad. I don't know if you're Jello you're salad. Oh. familiar with that. Uh -huh. I'm not sure I need to be. Oh, <laughs> you got a lot to learn about that. America. Go to Minnesota, they'll educate you. <laughs> All right, these uh, arguments were even more off off the wall, but that's a jelly. This Max. is also jelly to me, but <laughs> I can do this. The pot. I can I do know. this. <laughs> it, says it says it right there. Because your your argument with Jello mm. is that, that was a bad it's argument. not necessarily Jello, and this has just been around for a longer time. And Jello is made for making shots. This <laughs> is a jelly, gelatin. It, it's all related. Though yeah. you mentioned savory jellies. We need to stop that. That's the whole yeah. aspect I thing. Love That's weird, right? I That's not cool. It. No, you don't. I do. You put it on top of a pate, that little layer of the, you get that like right. If I hadn't it already point. decided against your argument, <laughs> I would change my mind because shame on you. <laughs> Give me the meat jelly. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. All right. I haven't heard select all before. Okay, round three. I'll kickstart it with chips. All right. So whilst the reputation of like British food hasn't always been great, fish and chips is a status, right? It's a status symbol, it's been there forever, and it is fried battered fish and fried potatoes. The potatoes are chipped. The verb to chip, you, you create chips of potato, 
and then fry them. So they should be a little bit soggy, they don't have to be super crispy. We're not talking French fries, we're talking chips, but they're the best. Okay. Is that? Do you believe that these are better than like a proper twice fried Belgian frites? Like you actually would stare me in the face and say that these Hi. English chips that you go, they're meant to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> you would actually say that these are better. Like, I, I, all I can fall back on is if it's gonna be a fried potato, it's the verb, it's again, it's the verb to chip. You chip a potato, so it has to be a chip. Okay, I would argue that these are actually properly chipped more so than those, and this has a fascinating origin story. I believe that potato chips are a uniquely American product. They were invented by George Crumb in Saratoga Springs, New York. Oh. This has a fascinating myth behind it that probably didn't happen, but there was a uh, customer that was off, kept saying, slice the potatoes thinner and thinner, and so he chipped and chipped and chipped away until they were these thin chips, fried them, customer loved them. And so I think that this is a more properly chipped chip than, if you look at the origin of French fries, people will point out they're actually Belgian, but the term French does not mean the country, it refers to the knife cut, because the French codified a ton of cooking. So it is actually I a French know. cut potato, which is so much better than this, which is not even a chip. These are called potato wedges, and KFC got rid of them because nobody wanted them. Oh, <laughs> damn. That's a good I, I'm argument, Josh. I'm close to agreeing if it wasn't the fact that nostalgia and growing up with these mm -hmm. chips. The problem is these weren't chipped and chipped and chipped away. They were sliced. They're, they're, they're sliced. No, they're crisps. Yeah. And then what they were cooked, so they're crisp. These are crisps, Are they using, chips. like, a hammer and cudgel to chip them? <laughs> no, they're using a knife. These are sliced. So, like, I don't know what to tell you. Potato chips, potato crisps. What like a they're crisp. Chip? What is a paint chip? <sighs> This is frustrating because they're just arguing about language. Like, in my mind, if someone makes a thing and calls it a hamburger, even if it doesn't have beef or a burger in it or bread, but the person who created it calls it a hamburger, then it's a hamburger. Right? I'm on the side of the creator. If the guy who made these chips, the British chips, if he calls them chips, they're chips. If the American guy who made these chips, American chips, calls them chips, then they're chips too. They can both be chips. This isn't worth arguing about. Maybe I'm missing the point of this video. This is just made to watch an American and a Brit argue about language. Let's learn to, to coexist. These little differences make life interesting. They make life fun. If I'm with a British person and say, hey, I would like some chips, thinking I'm gonna get American chips, I get French fries. Oh, what a fun little mistake. Darn, I got french fries instead of chips. Oh, like a paint chip. Chip. What is a paint chip to you? A like, paint oh, the chip? paint is chipping off the walls. Which shape more accurately describes the paint chip? <laughs> That's I a good it point. depends on how many oh, layers of paint. I got a centimeter thick wad of paint falling. What about wood chips? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is, this is, I mean, come on. You're, these are chipped? You chip with a chisel. These are sliced as well. How do you think these were made? Those are chips. Thank also, you, Max. Onomatopoetically, chip. Those are a chip. They just, this yeah. is a crisp. <laughs> They're crisp. not crisp at all. These are like, these are called gloms. I'm it's losing this based like, on onomatopoeia. It's like mashed potato <laughs> that has been burst into a mold. No, those. Yeah. First of all, soggy potatoes in general, yeah. Wrapped in newspaper with fish. You're not helping me. Yeah. <laughs> fish and chips on a Friday, and you're up. A touch of the old days with our soggy chips. I'm sticking with them. I think you've taken the win. All right. Lead away. Here we have the delicious American invention of muffin. Um, it's an American invention? I would like to stand on my soapbox so here, and I would like to phone in this round basic. and give the win to him, because I have my own point to pitch. These should not be called muffins. These should be called cupcakes. This is simply a delightful cake that has been baked inside of a cup. And you There's can no have frosting. Frosted cupcakes and unfrosted cupcakes. Oh. Any unfrosted cupcake should be called a muffin. In fact, many of the best cupcakes are actually what we would call muffins. Muffins tend to be denser and moister and filled with delightful flavors, where a lot of cupcakes are just made with mass produced ingredients. So I am urging America, Britain, everyone rally around each other to finally unite to call this a cupcake. Thank you, I rest my case. I also, can't we do that, have I'm sorry. It's our own thing. And you know what? We weren't hard finding them. We found plenty of English muffins <laughs> here in LA. My problem is, this is also a muffin. It has Wait. the muffin top, 
where it bakes and falls over the mm. paper. We all have a good muffin top, it's mm. great, right? That is the signal of a great cake. It's stuffed with blueberries, chocolate chips, whatever you want, it's a quick bread. That is a muffin. This is an English muffin, and it is Arguing a small, for round, each other? slightly leavened bread. That's a crumb. Yeah, this is a moment of unity I didn't expect. Josh is arguing against the Americans for the Brits, and the British guy is arguing for the Americans and against the Brits. I mean, they both have great points. And I know that, yeah, an English muffin is not, they don't have English muffins in England. They're called crumpets. And it is a small, round, slightly leavened bread. That's a crumpet. No, crumpet's got holes in and is yeasted. The, the muffin, oh. you know the muffin man? I do know, oh, yeah, he loves some Drury Lane. He absolutely Good. does. And he goes around with a bell because these were so popular at one point, the muffin men used to ring bells to let you know that he, they were in town to sell you the muffins because no one had ovens in their homes, much like an ice cream van does today. And Parliament even tried to pass a bill to tell them to shut the bell up because it was <laughs> off everyone. So muffins <laughs> have been around in Britain and especially uh, London for a long, long time on Drury Lane. That, however, is a sweet muffin and I'm also here for it. America. <laughs> I thought English muffins were not... Wait, I'm confused. America invented Divided. the English muffin Samuel Thomas That's New what York I thought, yeah. Of Thomas English muffins, invented it and initially called it the toaster crumpet. As I say again, these are crumpets, despite them not looking the same or being cooked the same at all. That's what he tried to market them as. Every American said, what the hell is a crumpet? And he said, you know what a muffin is? And they said, like, maybe. And he was like, ah, it's the English muffin. And so that is how we're English kidding. muffins were invented in America. I feel like we're, we, even we are divided on this, which is the muffin. We need mass. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the muffin. <laughs> I like your cupcake argument. Thank okay. you. Fun little fact. Mm. We went to school one mile down the road from Little Moffat's house. Wait, she's a real person? What? She lived, oh, what was the name of the road? Toffet. Little Miss Moffat. No, you're, she's she's sat on her. What? She sat on a top. Little Miss Moffitt sat on a toffet. Toffet. In a cut away. What was the road? What are you talking about? You we went to school together. You walked down the same I road. Think this was a dream, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I still won the muffin round. Should we do dark five? <laughs> Where did you live in relation to Frodo? <laughs> <laughs> Just left of the Shire. Okay. Hertfordshire. <laughs> all right. Last one. Once and for all. Would you like to do the honors? I would love to. What we have here, wiggly jiggly pudding. American pudding. Now you might say that is a custard. No, custard comes from French and it is typically set with egg. American pudding is set with starch and occasionally gelatin, similar to an Italian panna cotta. Yum. I, can't, I don't even know what's under there because y'all got 90 different things that you could have put under that, that they're cloche. But for us, we have cups of pudding and they are delightful. You can put rice in it, you can put tapioca in it, but at the end of the day, it is dairy that is thickened with some form of starch. And therefore always sweet? Yes, pudding, screw it. Pudding is always sweet. <laughs> because it's the sweet savory thing that confuses me. Because we do have many puddings, but I think this was the first. Oh, pudding. oh, so from oh that's French not what Boudin, I... Literally... I thought he was gonna have a bread pudding under there or something, that's good stuff. But I think this was the first. Black pudding, mm -hmm. so Black from pudding. the French boudin, literally like pudding. We had the Great Fire of London in, 19, in 1666, <laughs> and it happened on Pudding Lane. And Pudding Lane was where there was a, a tranche of, or a road, a track down to the Thames, and all the butchers would throw their offal out, and it would make its way down to the Thames. Oh. It's all about offal, and this is blood pudding, uh, blood sausage, and that is one of our many puddings. What's like a delicious sweet treat you eat after a savory meal? That can also be a pudding, perhaps steamed, but it is sponge but pudding based. Is, no, no, but like pudding is an event, right? Like, oh, we'll, we'll take pudding. What are you having for pudding? Pudding can also be an occasion, correct. Or it can be a souffléed egg, flour and milk mixture if uh -huh. you're from Yorkshire. That's what or I was. Or it could in fact just be the basin that you cook the pudding in. There's, there's, there's me or you could make it from suet. We have suet pudding too. Oh. That's kidney fat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. this is the one I'm putting forward. This is the original. This is black pudding. Okay. Awful based. The Romans were making this stuff. Awful based? What is awful? Awful. The edible organs or organ parts of a butchered animal. The parts of a butchered animal that are considered inedible by human beings. Discarded viscera. Right. Awful based. Fro the Romans were making this stuff. Like, it's, it's, it's ancient old, and here we are still enjoying black pudding. The Romans wasn't calling it pudding. He's eating it. 
You know, the Romans were calling it whatever they called it. Like, I, I understand the etymology I imagine, I imagine. And so I respect it, but to me, the definition is way too wide ranging for it to be meaningful outside of that specific in-group in the culture. This is pudding, slangcha. <laughs> Okay, I have to stop this right there. <laughs> I can't go on so anymore. Um, all right, before this I make my decision, I have some questions. Uh oh. Okay, so a haggis is a pudding, mm -hmm. but so is awful steamed awful. So this is but awful. so is a steamed pudding that you'd have at school mm. lunch. Yep, with treacle on top. Yeah. Yeah. What would you call a sausage? <laughs> that, I mean, a sausage is a sausage, right? But how is a sausage very different from a black pudding? This has blood, which counts as awful, and therefore the butchers were getting rid of it down the track through pudding lane. Oh. But some sausages have awful in them as well. I go to a baseball Ooh. game and I'm eating tubes of pudding inside my hot dog bun. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I think because you got just too many uses for the yeah, word. Yeah, we've confused ourselves. We're gonna go with this. Yeah. We still I do lost like that, uh, When English yeah. people say, "I want some pud," pud. <laughs> I do enjoy that, regardless of what they actually mean. If someone came up to me and said, I want some put, I would think they were asking for something real different. It depends on where they come with the wing. <laughs> Pudding. Excellent. Well, you're the official adjudicator because you know everything when it comes to food and history, which is why right. Max is awesome. We're going to do some other videos with Max on the channel as well. Keep your eyes out for that. But a massive thank you, Josh, for competing in British versus American food terms. Are we any the wiser? Comment down below. Hmm. Arguing over syntax is just kind of old to me now, but this was interesting. Max made a great point about sausage being pudding. British pudding is sausage, but there's also bread pudding. Yeah, it's a wide definition. I'm having an existential crisis over pudding. Well, the Brits win again. Well, thank you all for watching this with me, and I'll see you next time. Later.